Today we're talking trekking poles, and we have two popular options to consider. The Canock Carbon Cork versus the Gosmer Gear LT5. That's next. Welcome to Backcountry Renegade. I'm Jeff. If you're new here, this channel is all about backpacking, hiking, and overlanding, and all the gear in between. And if you're into those things too, consider subscribing. There's a ton of benefits when it comes to trekking poles, and today we're going to consider two of the most popular options that are out there when it comes to lightweight trekking poles. The Canock Carbon Cork trekking poles, as well as the Gosmer Gear LT5. Both these trekking poles are made of carbon fiber. They're lightweight and they're highly adjustable as well. So they're really a good option to consider. They also have a lot of differences as well. The Gosmer gear are ultra light, they're sleek, they feature twist lock mechanism to close and expand it. They're touted as being the lightest trekking poles out there. They do retail for $195 and they are made here in the US in Austin, Texas. The Canock trekking poles are touted as being a four season trekking pole that's also very durable but lightweight. Canox said that these poles are designed to be built to be the last poles you'll ever need to buy and they're a small business that creates local manufacturing jobs as well here in the U.S. Their headquarters are in Portland, Oregon. They're called the ultimate trekking poles for long travel heavy loads and harsh conditions. So these are poles that you'll have for life. These sell for $189.99. So let's look at a little bit more detail at each of these trekking pole options and consider what might be the best buy for you. So starting off at the handles, we consider the Gosmer gear uh, trekking pole here. It looks like it's actually cork. However, this is actually an UVA foam. It, it feels and looks very similar to cork. However, it's gonna be a lot lighter and a little bit more spongier than cork. The Canock trekking poles actually feature ergonomic cork grip. So this is real cork, also features an extra long handle, uh, so you can grip a little bit further down and still be gripping some of the cork. It's ergonomic and it's very dependable. Now cork does weigh a little bit more than the UVA foam that you see here, but uh, it is going to be more water resistant. So if you have sweaty hands, uh, cork is definitely a cool option for that. Uh, preference wise, I tend to prefer the cork just because of those extra um, water capabilities that it's more resistant to. So sweaty hands, you're not going to slip or fall when it's dependable. Another thing to consider is the shaft material. The Gosmer gear features carbon fiber tubing and it is a really nice lightweight option. Now compare that to the Canock uh, trekking pole here and it also has carbon fiber. Now the thing about the Canock is this is a four season carbon fiber tube so it's a little bit more durable, a little bit more weighty as well that you can feel. Um, both carbon fiber is good because it has low vibration. They're both stiff and it gives good durability. Now the Canock are going to be a little bit more dependable, a little bit more heavy duty because they are the four seasons. So they're made to withstand a little bit more abuse than the lightweight Gosmer gear. So let's talk about the weight option. This is where the Gosmer gear really stands out. The Gosmer gear uh, LT5 trekking poles weigh only 10 ounces for the pair. That is absolutely amazing. That's 5.1 ounces for each pole. So pretty awesome weight. Now compare that to the Canock. The Canock weighs 256 grams or 9.6 ounces per pole. So that comes out to be a little over 18 ounces when you get this all together. So the Canock trekking poles are going to be heavier because they're a little bit more four season, more durable for that. So they're built uh, a little bit tougher. But if you consider one of these poles is almost the same weight as two of the Gosmer gear uh, trekking poles. Now you are going to be getting a bit more durability with the Canock, so something to keep in mind. 
Now the Knock does make an EVA foam version of this, which brings down the weight of each pole from 9.6 ounces to seven ounces. So it does make it a little bit more lightweight. So that would bring the total weight, if you go with the EVA foam handles, that would bring the total weight of the Knock trekking poles to about 14 ounces. So a little bit more dependable, but you are losing the really cool features of cork. Now let's talk about the locking mechanisms. One of the features where Gosmer gear looks to save on their weight is by going with a twist lock mechanism to lock. So as you can see, you loosen it counterclockwise and you can extend the pull. When you want to tighten it down, you tighten it uh, clockwise until the expansion here uh, expands and locks in place. Now you have to find a balance between that. You don't want to do it uh, too tight because you don't want to break the carbon fiber uh, pole in there, but you also don't want to do it too loose uh, because you don't want it slipping when you actually put it down. So you need to have it more precise and it takes some uh, figuring out to do. So it's a little bit longer to tighten and to get in the proper uh, area that you need and you need to find a balance between too tight and too loose with the twist locks. But what it does do is it keeps this nice and sleek. So there's nothing for this to really catch on. Let's say if you put it onto your pack, there's no loops or anything um, that uh, this is gonna get caught on. And uh, the reason for that is because of the twist lock mechanism. Now compare that to the Kanak trekking poles. You have what they call the quick release locking mechanism. And as you can see, you have this little lever that uh, you can uh, tighten as well from the bottom and you can loosen and you just open it up and you have this friction that's created that provides a quick lock system. It holds pretty firm as long as it's nice and tight. It's definitely a lot faster than the Gosmer Gear LT5s and it's gonna be more dependable when it comes to uh, withstanding the load and putting it down. It's not gonna slip very easily compared to the Gosmer Gear. Overall though, uh, these locking mechanisms here, this uh, quick lock here on the Kanak is going to add to the weight because you have a mixture of plastic and metal together to create that quick lock mechanism. Where the Gosmer gear is just a twi twist lock and it's all internal and it's gonna be a lot lighter. So that is where Gosmer gear looks at saving the weight. Now let's talk about the adjustability for both these trekking poles. Both these trekking poles actually feature a three pole segment telescoping uh, pole here. So it's pretty neat. The Gosmer gear, when it's collapsed, is only 23.5 inches, or that's 60 centimeters in length at a minimum collapse length. Now compare that to the minimum collapse length of the Knock trekking pole. It's 28 inches or 71 centimeters. And you can just see here uh, that the difference here um, is about five inches, a little less than five inches here. So as I line these up here, you can see the difference. Um, you're saving uh, several inches here um, on the Gosmer gear where the Kanak are gonna be a little bit more uh, harder to compact. Now, compare that to the extended length. Uh, the Gosmer gear can actually extend all the way to 51 inches, or that's 130 centimeters in length. The uh, Kanak trekking poles can go all the way up to uh, 62 inches, or 158 centimeters in length. So you are getting a lot more pull with the Kanak, and it's a lot more versatile as well. So if you need it to, if if you're a tall person, you want something a little bit longer, um, the Kanak trekking poles are gonna be that option there for you. For me, I'm kind of a shorter guy, and uh, the Gosmer gear actually are plenty, and I don't wanna have any extra pole there that I don't need that just adds to the extra weight. So really, when it comes to packing, you can actually uh, fit the Gosmer gear uh, really nicely on your pack. They're not gonna stick out too much like a big antenna, uh, kinda like the Kanak does, especially if you're using a smaller pack and you wanna adjust it to the, to the outside there. It kinda stands out a bit much. Uh, the Gosmer gear are sleeker, they're more compact. You can even fit the inside of some backpack. So uh, pretty cool where the Kanak are just probably about too long uh, to in, in their compact stage to be able to do that. But if you're gonna be walking with your trekking poles most of the time without putting them in your pack and so you're gonna be holding them, it really shouldn't be that much of a concern how long they are. Now another thing to consider are the markings that they have in place for these poles uh, so you can know how far you are to do them. The Kanak trekking poles actually have these nice 
measurements here on the inside of the second pole and it even tells you where to stop. So you have 85 centimeters all the way up to 145 centimeters there in the middle section. On the bottom section, you also have some markings, which is very handy. And again, 85 centimeters up to 145 to up to the stop, which is about a 155 or so. And so you have these markings, so you can get it nice and precise in the exact place you need it on the Kanak trekking poles. Now compare that to the Gosmer Gear LT5. In the center section, you do have these markings here, 105 all the way up to 130 where it says stop here. But the, the difference about it is you do not have those markings here on the lower part. So the lower part does not have any markings. It would have been nice to just add that considering how much these are. So you can always make sure you get the precise height that you need when you're using your trekking poles. But if you uh, just adjust it to your height and uh, you can kind of just feel it to see what's right, uh, you can still make it. But it would have been nice to have the, the markings also on the bottom part of the trekking poles for the LT5s. Now let's talk about the tips. The Knot trekking poles do feature these carbonide uh, tips here and they are replaceable. So that's a, a really cool uh, thing there. Now compare that to the Gosmer gear. Uh, you do take those off as well. And you also have uh, these same carbonide tips that are also replaceable. So both of these feature nice uh, carbonide tips. The nice thing about those is uh, they do last long, but they're very cheap to replace and very easy to do so. Now, if you do not want to use the carbonide trips or you're looking at leave no trace, you don't want to mark up any rocks, uh, the Kanak and the Gosmer gear do uh, feature these little uh, soft feet here that you can use to protect that or to maybe give you a little extra grip uh, on the rocks as well. Uh, also, another thing that comes with uh, the Gosmer gear is you also have these small uh, little feet here. Now, the feet here are good for snow or mud, but the cool thing about the Knot trekking poles is they do feature the small ones uh, for the mud, but they also give you large ones for the snow. So you get a little bit more options uh, with the Knot trekking poles as far as the extras that come with it. Let's talk about the straps here. Now, if you look at the straps on the Gosmer gear, they're kind of just a, a cloth material. And now it is really soft. It is adjustable as well. So you can adjust it very easily. And uh, you, you do have that option where you could fully remove it if you chose to to save on the weight. Um, but uh, it's more just a cloth. There's no padding or anything in there for those. Compare that to the Kanak trekking poles. Uh, you have a lot more robust uh, of a material here. And inside you also have a little bit of cushion. So a little bit extra uh, comfort there for the Kanak. They are also highly adjustable and they can be removed as well if you choose to go without those. So uh, as you can see, it is a, a more comfort feature um, and it does add a little bit to the weight as a result. Another thing you might notice about the Kanak trekking poles is they do have the green or the orange depending on your right or left hand. And they have them labeled also on the handle here so you can know which one you have where the, uh, the Gosmer Gear LT5 are pretty much just uh, kind of universal. Uh, they can be used either right or left hand. Hand. Um, but because the Kanak are ergonomic handles, uh, you have them made specifically for your right or left hand. Another cool option about both of these trekking poles is because these are three sections, let's say um, you break one of the sections. You can actually buy just the replacement piece rather than having to buy a whole new uh, trekking pole set. So uh, these are pretty costly to uh, invest in right away, but your investment's protected because you can just buy replacement parts. So that's a pretty cool thing uh, whenever you need it. So they're both kind of touted as the last poles you'll ever need. Another cool thing with these poles is sometimes people don't need two poles. Maybe they just need one. And so both these uh, Kanak and the Gosmer gear uh, do have the option for you to buy a single trekking pole. Now it's very easy to do on the Kanak website. You can buy it in either the green or the orange depending on the hand that you're going to use. The Gosmer gear though, you have to buy them in the set and then once you buy them in the set, in order to get the, uh, the only buy one and, and not pay full price, you have to email them, put a note in your order and that you only are looking for one pole and they will refund you the difference and only ship you one pole.
poll. So concluding thoughts, which poll would I go with? Overall, I really like both of these features. They're both dependable, they're carbon fiber, they're relatively lightweight, and they're durable. For me personally, I have to go with the Gosmer Gear LT5. And the reason is because the pros outweigh the cons. First of all, the improved design over the LT4s, the previous model of these, uh, really makes these more compact and more sleek. So I really like that feature. Um, I'm not a guy who uses trekking poles a ton, but when I go for, for longer days, when I'm carrier heavy loads, I really need it for my knees. And, uh, and my hips. And so these are very helpful and I like carrying them uh, now. So I'm not gonna be holding them the majority of the time. So that way I want something that's lightweight that I can carry that's not uh, adding to the weight uh, too much of my pack. And the Gosmer gear are pretty much the lightest option you can find for that at only 10 ounces for the pair or 5.1 ounces for one of these. So uh, I really like that because of that. They're much lighter than the Canuck trekking poles. Now, they also have that sleek design where it has that internal twist lock. Now, it does take a little bit longer to set it, but as long as you do it right, they're dependable and they haven't slipped on me yet. Another cool thing about the Gosmer gear is while they are minimalistic, they do not skimp out on any of the features. Everything that you see with the Canuck trekking poles, the Gosmer gear also has. Has. It might be a little bit less durable. It might be a little bit lighter. It may not be as completely uh, water resistant on the handles like cork is, but you're saving a ton on weight. And that's something that I consider uh, a big thing for me is how much is it gonna weigh and can it do the same things? Now, however, if I'm using it uh, for, as a four season pull, this, I can get by with this and I have used this in the snow. However, it has uh, more prone uh, to breakage. And, but the cool thing about it is if you did break it, which I have yet to do, uh, you can just replace one of the segments if you need to. Now let's consider the cons. The first con obviously for the LT5s is gonna be that these are a pricier option. $195 is not cheap for trekking poles. You can go on Amazon, find some for 30, 40 bucks but you're gonna be paying in the weight and having to carry it. So you do get what you pay for and the lighter things you go, uh, the costlier they're gonna be as well as, as long as you want the dependability. The Gosmer gear, they do provide that uh, very nicely. Uh, so the LT5s are slightly a little less durable than the Canox, so that's a, another thing there, is if you're wanting something, a one pull for every single thing, uh, the Canox might be the way to go if you're gonna use these for skiing and things like that. Uh, the Gosmer gear, more for hiking, backpacking, uh, through hiking, things like that, but you can use them if you're walking on the snow. As far as using these for ski poles, I think I would probably go with something maybe a, a little bit more dependable. Um, the twist lock mechanism uh, is also another, uh, can be a con of this because it does take longer. If you over tighten it, it could possibly break. If you under tighten, it could slip. And so you need to find uh, the perfect balance for these. So uh, that is one of the cons. It's not as quick as the quick locks are for the Canucks. And another thing is the length adjustment markers are not on the bottom. Now this is very minor. I would have loved to see that with the LT5 just to get your precise height for the trekking poles when you're in use. So what did you think of these two trekking pole options? Which one would you go with and why? Would you go with the Gosmer Gear LT5 or the Canuck Carbon Cork? Leave me a comment in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you like what you saw, make sure to give me a thumbs up. Also subscribe for more gear review content like this. And as always, thanks for watching.